Welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Mark. You know that refusing to be complacent, we have committed to move beyond, beyond where we currently are and into an ever-growing walk with Jesus. We've committed to that, right? And refusing to be complacent, you know that we will reach beyond ourselves into the lives of broken people with the compassion of Jesus. We're doing it. We're doing it. I want you to know that This past February, we began a new habit that every second Sunday of the month, we would collect a love bucket offering just to increase our own compassion as a congregation and to reach out and just help broken people. With last week's love bucket offering, I want you to know that you have given more than $16,000 in the love bucket in seven months. That's incredible. Thank you for being a generous, compassionate church. Thank you for going beyond in in even your personal compassion. And and way to go. And last week I mentioned that uh, I'm going to be taking a trip to Haiti and our congregation has been asked to supply some school supplies. And the first service took all 50 bags. We had 50 bags available. We want 50 bags. The first service, you took all 50 bags. And then we just made cards and passed out cards, second service, and and all of them were taken. And and they're being brought in and the bins are being filled. Thank you for caring about other people over yourself. Thank you. We are in this series, Lead. Our series for August is Lead. We've been focused on just some basic leadership principles for the kingdom. Lee. We made a statement, even the last couple weeks, that if you are really going to follow Jesus, you will lead like Jesus. Every follower a leader. Wow. And a couple weeks ago, we began the series, and we just simply asked, Who? Who leads? And last week, if you remember, we answered the question, what? What do leaders do? Today I want to look at two texts, kind of the bookends for Matthew. Uh, Something at the beginning of Matthew, something at the end of Matthew, kind of the bookends of Matthew. And I want us to use these texts to consider the why. Why do we lead? Why? Before we get to our text, I want you to see a statement from a preacher. His name is Bill Hall, and he's an author. And I want you to see this statement. Look at this statement. American churches, he writes, American churches are filled with pew-filling sermon-tasting, spiritual schizophrenics whose belief and behavior are not congruent. American churches are filled with pew-filling, sermon-tasting, spiritual schizophrenics whose beliefs and behaviors are not congruent. Now, you don't have to answer out loud with this question, but... What's your reaction to that statement? In fact, how do you feel right now about that statement? Is it true? Is Bill right? If Bill is right, I can tell you this, we need to change. 
If Bill is right, we need to change everything. In fact, I want us to suppose this morning that Bill's right. I want us just to suppose Bill's right. Maybe we aren't being who Jesus wants us being. Just maybe we aren't doing what Jesus wants us doing. Is that possible? Let's assume that Bill's right. I want to use two texts today. The book ends of Matthew, at the beginning and at the end of Matthew. And I want us to use these texts to recalibrate our souls. And I want us to leave today simply just being committed to being the church Jesus wants us to be. Sound okay? Are you ready? We'll see. The first text I want to bring to your attention today is Matthew chapter 4, just 18 and 19. This is his first call. This is his initial call. His first call of anyone who would come follow him. This is his first call. For everyone who would follow Jesus, his first call. Look at this. This is great. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, and they were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. His first call. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. His first call, his initial call. And what a beautiful word picture for these fishermen, right? And Jesus was saying to them, guys, follow me, and from now on, I don't want you just reeling in fish. I want you reeling in men. Guys, from now on, I don't want you just casting out for fish. I want you casting out for men. I want you, I want to use you. Come follow me. I want to use you to bring in men and women into the kingdom. His first call. I will make you fishers of men. Wow. Now I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it to you? I think it's pretty obvious that Jesus, the Lord, intended for Peter and Andrew to do something more significant with their life than just focused on catching fish. Did you get that? He wanted them involved in something deeper. He wanted them involved in, in something more sig significant, something with an eternal significance. Now, it was okay for them to make their money catching fish. But he wanted their career to be something totally deeper and different. And I want you to hear me say today, it's okay to do something to bring in money. But I want you to understand today, there, for our Christ followers, for those of us who are following Jesus, there really ought to be a difference between your occupation and your career. Your occupation is how you bring in money to support, the, to support your family, support the kingdom, and to, to support other people. That's your occupation. But your career needs to go deeper. Your career needs to be something that's going to have an eternal significance. Are you following me? That's what he's asking of these guys. And I want you to hear today, it is, it is okay to sell fish. It is quite okay to sell hamburgers. It's a good thing to sell furniture. It really is. 
It's okay if you are building houses. It's okay if you're selling real estate. It's okay if you're selling windows for those houses on the real estate. It's okay. It's okay if your occupation is cutting the grass. It's okay if it's teaching math. It's okay. It's good if it's fixing cats. Now, there's a double meaning there, but think about it. A couple of you in here. It's okay to make money through your occupation, and I hope you're making lots of it. The Lord bless you. But as followers of Jesus, I got amens on that. All right. As followers of Jesus, that's not your career. It's not fishing for fish. It's fishing for me. His first call. Follow me and I will make you, and I'm talking to you, fishers of me. Isn't that cool? That's what he wants. Now I want you to look at the other book in of Matthew, and I want you to look at his final call. This is incredible. Matthew 28. I just want you to look at verse 19 and 20. His final call. Therefore, go. It's really interesting that this word go means as you go. As you go about fishing, as you go about selling furniture, as you go about fixing cats, as you go about teaching men, as you go about selling wind, as you go about, as you go. Here's this final call. Therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Wait a minute. His first call, go fish for men. His final call, go make disciples of all nations. It's the same thing. His first call and his final call, it's the same thing. Go make disciples. Every follower, a fisher. Every follower, a leader. His first call, his final call, they're the same thing. Go as you go. Fish for men <coughs> and women and boys and girls for the cause of Jesus. Amen? And I want you to know, please hear this, that this is not a call for just a few of us. This is a command for all of us. This, this command to go make disciples, it's not a suggestion to ponder. It's a command to obey. Now, here's where, we get, here's where we get messed up. I really don't want you to dread this command. I don't want you to see this as a duty to dread. No, no, no. I want you to see this as exciting because it's good news. I mean, we have really good news. When you boil it all down, I want you to listen to these statements. When you boil it all down, here's the gospel. Here's what it is. Our God, our God is so glorious, He deserves to be praised by every person on the planet. However, every person on the planet is a sinner and deserves eternal punishment in hell. But, that was a weird place for that. <laughs> Very weird. The devil was doing something odd with that. 
But seriously, our, our God is so glorious. Every person on the planet deserves to praise Him, right? However, every person on the planet is a sinner and deserves eternal punishment. But our glorious God, in His mercy, has provided a way for salvation that anyone, anyone who would love and follow Jesus can be reconciled and saved. That's good news. And those of us who have that gospel, those of us who know that gospel, those of us who believe that gospel, we ought to sit here right now so grateful and so excited to be used to share that news. Friends, we are not an audience of spectators. We are a family. We are a fellowship of disciple makers. We're not. We're not an audience of spectators. We are a fellowship of discipleship makers. I want you to get that. None of us should ever come into our gatherings. None of us should ever come in here on Sunday morning wondering to ourselves, I, w I hope they have a good service planned for us today. We are not American Idol. <laughs> Although our musicians are just as good. Better. And better. Yeah. But no, we're not American Idol. And, you know, and none of us should ever come in to judge the sermon. Uh, today, that one was a 6.5. <laughs> well, I think today's was 7.2. And you know what? We, we should never come in ready to judge the music, the songs. Well, today, I, I thought it was going to be a 10, but I think it's an 8 today because, well, I enjoyed most of the songs, but that one song, I didn't really know that, and I, therefore I didn't really, I didn't like that one at all. I'm giving it an A. <laughs> we are not an audience of spectators. We are not American consumers. We are a fellowship of discipleship makers. Is Bill right? American churches are filled with pew-filling, sermon-tasting, spiritual schizophrenic, whose beliefs and behaviors are not congruent. Isn't that it? I mean, isn't that what we wrestle with every stinking day? Does our beliefs and our behaviors match? Do we really believe? Do we really believe what the what we're reading in Scripture? Do we really believe what we've been saying? Do we really believe what we've been singing about? My friends, if our God is really as great as He says He is, and if salvation is really as great as we say it is, what are we doing? People are going to hell. We can't waste time just entertaining ourselves. We can't waste time just organizing programs that will just please ourselves. We can't. We don't have time for that. We have a mission. It's why we're here. I mean, wh why doesn't he just take us from the baptistry? Wouldn't that be awesome? Ooh. Why doesn't he just take us from the baptistry? Why in the world would he leave us here? Why would he leave us in a world of suffering where there's all kinds of tornadoes and tsunamis and earthquakes and sicknesses and diseases and sin? Why would he leave us here? I'll tell you why. We have a job. All of us 
have a job. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. His first call and his final call, it's what it is. It's the essence of Christianity. It's what it is. Friends, here's what I honestly believe with all my heart. Every one of you, every follower of Jesus, every one of you will plateau in your faith walk with Jesus. You will. You will plateau, you will stagnate, you will become complacent. And you either stay there or you're going to die. Unless you are personally active in assisting other people in their faith walk with Jesus Christ. And so here's my final question. It may be for your first time, it may be again. Will you follow Jesus? Will you follow Jesus this week? If you will, you will lead like him. And you will be involved in casting. Not for fish. But for men. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning.